Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another Asus 14-inch laptop that I found to be quite nice. This is their ZenBook 14 UM346HA. We looked at something similar a few weeks ago that had an Intel processor. This one has a Ryzen 7 8840HS. And as configured, I think this is a really good value. It's selling at Walmart right now for $799 complete with an OLED display. And we're going to take a closer look at this and what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from Asus. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now, as I mentioned, this has an AMD Ryzen 7 8840HS processor. What's also nice for $799 is that it has 16 gigabytes of DDR5X RAM on board. So you can definitely get some gaming done on this. We'll see that in a few minutes along with video editing and other more strenuous tasks. The Intel one we looked at a few weeks ago had only 8 gigabytes of RAM on its entry level model, which did hinder things a bit given how memory hungry games and video editing applications are. So it was very nice to see that. The RAM, however, is not upgradable. It also has 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage. You can upgrade the storage, though, so if you did need more down the road, you can probably uh, get that in there just by taking off the bottom case here. Now, as far as the display is concerned, it has a very nice 14-inch 1920 by 1200 OLED display. Now, you don't typically see OLEDs at this price point, but Asus managed to get that to work here. The only issue, of course, is that it's not a very high resolution display, although at 14 inches, a 1080p equivalent display like this one actually looks pretty good to me. And you'll see some very deep blacks on this. It's got a million to one contrast ratio. It also meets 100% of DCI P3 color. So if you're doing video editing or photo editing, the colors on here should be very accurate for that work. And because you have the RAM on board, you can actually do some of that work on here within reason, of course. Now, when the brightness is turned up all the way, it runs at 400 nits. There is a peak brightness of 500 nits when it's in an HDR mode. The display, as you can see, is also a touch screen. And you can, if you lay it flat here, use styluses with it as well, although it doesn't flip around into a two-in-one tablet but it is nice to have that touchscreen functionality on board here. Now, battery life on this is also very good. In fact, it will get way more than a workday, about 15 to 18 hours in my testing. That's provided you keep the brightness down on the display and you stick to some basic applications like web browsing and email and maybe some conferencing apps. If you are gaming or video editing on it, of course, that will impact the battery life a bit, but for basic work, I think this will very much get you through a long commute or uh, traveling somewhere via airplanes. So all in, a very nice laptop here that offers great battery life and, as you'll see, very good performance too. It's not that heavy either. It comes in at about 2.82 pounds or 1.28 kilograms. It's got an all-metal design here, so it feels very nice. The only thing that I noticed is that you do have to kind of hold the keyboard down to keep it from popping up on you when you lift the display up. But beyond that, a very nicely constructed laptop here that also performs quite nicely. Now, as far as ports, you do have a few on here worth talking about. Uh, you have a USB-A port here, a full-size one on the left-hand side. You do have some vents for its cooling system, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Additionally, you have two USB Type-C ports here. This one is a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port that's also compatible with Thunderbolt. So if you were doing video editing or gaming, you could actually plug in an external GPU to that port that would normally support just Thunderbolt. And because USB 4 is compatible with Thunderbolt, you can use those Thunderbolt devices on this port only. These ports also are full service, so they can output display and charge the laptop in addition to using data devices. Now, this port here is just a regular USB Type-C 10 gigabit per second port. So if you have a Thunderbolt device, you got to plug it in here, not in here, because it won't work on the left-hand port, uh, just the right-hand one here. 
It would have been nice to have had two USB 4 ports here to reduce that confusion, but at least you've got one right there. There's a headphone microphone jack here along with a full-size HDMI output that they managed to sneak in there as well. So all in here, a pretty nice little laptop insofar as ports are concerned. There is no card reader on this though, so you'll need to carry that around with you. The keyboard here is equally nice. It's got nicely spaced keys here with a decent amount of key travel. It is backlit. I didn't have much trouble getting used to the keyboard here and it has a very nice tactile feedback to it. There is a new key though on the laptop here and that is the Copilot key. And this works mostly as kind of a window into the Microsoft Bing Open AI thing. So when you hit this, you get your uh, little AI conversation that pops up. It will link up to files that you've stored on the computer along with things that you might have on your phone so it can access that data if you let it, but it doesn't do as much as I thought it would do. I asked it to like make me a Word document, for example, and it doesn't do that yet. So a lot of the AI assistance is very much limited to this window here. Unlike the other search here, if I type in Word and hit enter, it will load up Word for me. Here you have to go ahead and click after doing the search to get the application to load up. So this is currently in preview, it says, and it's definitely a preview. It's not fully baked just yet, and it doesn't offer that much more functionality beyond what you would get if you logged into Bing using a web browser, but it is uh, there for you to take a look at if you want to get at that. Additionally, of course, you got the trackpad here, which tracks very accurately. Uh, no issues with the trackpad at all. It is a mechanical clicking trackpad, so you can't push at the top here, but you can click pretty much from here on down. And overall, I found it to be a very functional trackpad for the price point. There's also a 1080p webcam here at the top. There is a shutter to block the lens, as you can see, and when that shutter is enabled, it becomes orange. And the video quality out of it is not bad here, as you can see. It shoots at 1080p at 30 frames per second. It also supports some of the Microsoft AI features, so you can have an OS level blurring effect. It doesn't seem to work as well as the Intel version did in my testing. You can see there are some artifacts around my head there. It also supports the creepy Microsoft feature that redirects your eyes so that it looks like you're looking at the camera even when you're looking lower on the screen. The webcam also works with Windows Hello, so you can use it for facial recognition to get into the computer without a password. So that's a, a nice add on there. However, it does not have a fingerprint reader on board. So your only uh, biometric option here is the webcam. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin with some web browsing and work our way up from there. So we'll load up the Chrome browser here and visit the nasa.gov homepage. It does render everything in very quickly as you can see here. No issues with any kind of lag or performance problems. You can use the touch display to navigate. It does bounce a little bit when you uh, press against it, but otherwise it is a very nicely performing machine for doing the basics. It also has Wi-Fi 6E on board, and I was able to transfer some files a little bit earlier at around 60 to 75 megabytes per second off of my access point in the ceiling there. So the Wi-Fi performance is quite good on this if you have a modern access point. A little bit earlier, I did a YouTube test where we loaded up a 4K 60 frames per second video. I was playing it back at 1080p, of course, given that is the maximum resolution this display supports, but it was able to maintain the frame rate with no drop frames once everything got started up. So for media playback, I think this is going to be more than adequate for watching YouTube, Twitch, and of course, all of the popular streaming services out there. So for casual tasks, I think this will do quite well. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 305 on version 2.0 of that test. And that was very close to the result we got on the Intel version of this laptop, which came in at 335. Now, a little bit earlier, I did some video editing on here using DaVinci Resolve and a 4K60 project. And I was able to drop in a couple of transitions and have them render without any noticeable lag pretty much in real time. So because you have the 16 gigs of RAM, you can get a lot of basic video work done on this. If you start pushing the envelope with 3D renders and all sorts of color grading, I think that of course will impact things more significantly. That's where you probably want to have that external GPU or perhaps just a more powerful computer. 
But for doing the basics like I do here on the channel, I think this will work quite well for that type of video editing. Now we also played some games on it, and this is Red Dead Redemption 2, running at the native resolution of the display, 1920 by 1200 at the lowest settings. And here we were able to get it to run at about 45 to 50 frames per second most of the time. Very, very playable. Not quite 60, but if you are a casual gamer that maybe has a more powerful computer at home, you can take this on the road, get your game caught up while you're hanging out in the hotel room or whatever, and sync up that save file when you get back to your more powerful computer. It is a playable experience here, as you can see. We did not test this on the Intel version of this because that laptop they sent us had only eight gigabytes of RAM. This is where the RAM makes a big difference. More recent games require more video memory and because the memory on board is shared with the graphics side of things, you need a lot of RAM to get some of these games to boot up. Now we also tried out an older game. This is GTA 5 running at high settings, again at the native resolution of the display. And as you can see here, we are running north of 60 frames per second, and the game looks spectacular. So if you've got some older games in your Steam library, those are likely going to run great on here, and the newer games will be playable if you adjust down the resolution and settings accordingly. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 3,175. That is pretty much a tie with the Intel version of the laptop that we looked at a few weeks ago. We're seeing slightly better performance on the CPU side of this AMD version, but by and large for games, it's going to be pretty much a wash between the two, but still great performance out of just a single chip. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99.7%. You can also see what temperature the computer was at when that test concluded. And what's nice about this test is that we're able to see how well the system will perform under load over an extended period of time. And here it looks like you're not going to see much thermal throttling, even if the system is running full blast for extended periods. However, you will hear the fan on it. The fan isn't all that noisy except when you boot a game up. And even then, it's not going to be as loud as what you might get out of a gaming laptop. But it's definitely audible as you are playing. However, when you're just sitting on the desktop here or just browsing the web or whatever, you will very rarely hear that fan kick on. When you first get these laptops, the fan is often working hard because there's a lot of updates that come down initially. But once everything settles down, when you're doing work on it, it should be a pretty quiet experience. And there are some ways to adjust the performance levels on the laptop to keep the fan noise at a minimum if you are just doing some basic work on it. And speaking of noise, I was very impressed with the speaker system on the laptop. They are mostly downward firing speakers, but it sounds great. You've got a nice range of sound, even a little bit of bass, not a lot, but a little more than I expected. And it also has a nice surround effect to it that doesn't sound fake. It really sounds good and enveloping. So I was very pleased with the audio, both for music, but also for games and for video conferencing. Now, one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux performance. I did boot up the most recent version of Ubuntu to see what it would detect. And most of the system was detected properly. That includes the video, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the touch display. However, one thing I noticed was that the speakers didn't work, even though it detected the audio system successfully. So I did try to hit the buttons there to unmute everything, and I just could not get the speakers to work at all. But that was the only issue I ran into. So that's something that can likely get rectified in a future driver or BIOS update. Overall, though, I found this to be a very good value at that $799 price point. You get a great display, great performance, an adequate amount of RAM and storage, and a pretty lightweight laptop for traveling as well. So far this year, this is probably the closest MacBook Air alternative that I've seen that I think gets close to Apple's offering, especially given the battery life you get on this one. So all in, I think a real winner here from Asus. And uh, this one I liked a little better than the Intel version, primarily because of how it's configured at the lower price point. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, 
and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.